Good evening, and welcome to Granton Parish Church. It's lovely to see you all on this Christmas Eve. How exciting is this? We are delighted that we're not just here in person, but in case any of you don't know, we have a Zoom congregation who meet us on our screen here. And tonight, in actual fact, our message for tonight will come all the way from Canada. So um, we'll be delighted to hear what Caroline has to say with status, but I'll introduce her when we come along. I'd like to say a big hello to everybody here. And as I say, particularly, we have another Canadian who has logged on to us, Penny Cook and Silvernows, those exotic places that we get to. <laughs> um, tonight's service at the end, there will be a retiring offering if anybody would like to donate to Bethany Christian Trust. For those of you who don't know or haven't heard of Bethany, they um, help with homelessness in lots of aspects, but particularly the man, and we have been involved here in the congregation with providing meals for the Welcome Centre, which is now being run at Haymarket, which is for people who would be on the street. Um, we, they also do a number of other things which are marvellous to try and their, their, their ideal situation is that they will eradicate homelessness. But, as I say, we will have a retiring offering at the back. If you, anybody would like to donate, we'd be very grateful. There will also be some soup served at the end of the service, if anybody would like to join us. Um, it is leek and potato, and it is vegetarian. So you're <laughs> welcome to join us. Tomorrow, we have a service at 10.30, which is to celebrate Christmas Day. And we would ask you to bring a gift that you've been given from, that, from Santa or anybody else that you would like to show us all. It's very informal. We sing a few carols. It doesn't go on for long, but it's just to mark our Christmas Day here. Um, and Chaz will be hosting this. Okay. I think without further ado, we will sing our first carol, which is tonight, Angels from the Realms of Glory.
If you'd like to now sit down, that'd be lovely. I'm hoping with the wonders of modern science that we are now going to go over to
I now like to invite Gail up to do our reading. The reading this evening is from the book of Luke, chapter 2, reading from verses 1 to 21. The birth of Jesus. At that time, the Emperor Augustus ordered the census to be taken throughout the Roman Empire. When this first census took place, Quirinius was the governor of Syria. Everyone then went to register himself, each to his own town. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the town of Bethlehem in Judea, the birthplace of King David. Joseph went there because he was a descendant of David. He went to register with Mary, who was promised in marriage to him. She was pregnant, and while they were in Bethlehem, the time came for her to have a baby. She gave birth to her first son, wrapped him in strips of cloth, and laid him in a manger. There was no room for them to stay at the inn. There were some shepherds in that part of the country who were spending the night in the fields taking care of their flocks. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone over them. They were terribly afraid, but the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I am here with good news for you, which will bring great joy to all the people. This very day in David's town, your Saviour was born, Christ the Lord, and this is what it will prove to you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great army of heaven's angels appeared with the angel, singing praises to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them back into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and saw the baby lying in the manger. When the shepherds saw him, they told him what the angel had said about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said. Mary remembered all these things and thought deeply about them. The shepherds went back, singing praises to God for all they had heard and seen. It had been just as the angel had told them. A week later, when the time came for the baby to be circumcised, he was named Jesus, the name which the angel had given him before he had been conceived. May the Lord bless us in these readings. Amen. I think they're switching to me now. And I think we're now back over to Caroline. Okay. Hello, Granton. As you've heard, um, I'm speaking to you live from my home in Vernon, British Columbia, where it's not quite dark, although in a few minutes you will probably notice the outside lights come on just in time for midnight. This evening is one more step in the experiment our dear friend Norman Smith put into motion in 2020, when he invited me to be what I call a digital member of Granton Parish Church. Now, until now, my involvement has been in written form or pre-taped appearances with live presence only at evening meetings. So some of you know me from those. You see, there's an eight hour time difference and many thousands of miles of separation between us. But Zoom rocks. And because of Zoom, we also have my uh, family in Toronto. Um, time in there is 6 p.m. And here in Vernon, it's 4 p.m. Wherever, whenever we are, this night of watching is special. And it is an honor for me to join in the celebrations. In her reflection on December the 4th, Leslie Hamilton asked the question, are you ready for Christmas? And of course, we all groan knowing that the next three weeks were going to be crazy busy and we would be very tired 
come watch night on December 24th. Well, three weeks later, here we are, indeed tired, but standing on the edge of what that preparation has all been about, the rejoicing over the birth of the child in a manger and the realization that God is so with us that it doesn't matter where or when or how we have our parties, our Creator is celebrating too. Christmas is about to happen, whether or not we are prepared. We have heard Luke's words, the story of our Lord's birth, and now we can relax, be quiet for a wee while, and know the Christ child is in our lives just as his parents, the angels and the shepherds did so long ago. We have the same awe, whether we are eight hours, 5,000 miles, or 2,000 years and 10,000 miles away from the Bethlehem stable. Over the four weeks of Advent, David used as his theme the traditions of Christmas preparation. Some are ancient, written for us in the scriptures, coming out of the Hebrew hope for a Messiah, a savior, a way to reconnect with the Lord of creation. Other expressions, uh, or other traditions are expressions of what we know about God. And the evergreen tree reflects the never changing nature of God. And sometimes we have a wreath, that circular wreath, which tells us there is no beginning and no end to our creator. Some of our traditions uh, emerge from foods that we use to celebrate. We wouldn't be Scottish if we didn't have shortbread. And that little girl face on the Zoom camera there um, made these shortbread cookies in Toronto a few weeks ago. She's learning uh, all of her Scottish traditions. As Paul reminded us about two weeks ago in the service, many Christmas traditions involve a journey. In our reading tonight, we heard again the tale of those journeys. Mary and Joseph on their five-day trek from Nazareth the angels leaving their idyllic heavenly home to appear before the shepherds. And then those shepherds traveling in the dark, likely stumbling through the fields to make their way to Bethlehem and then home to their sheep. There were no battery powered torches to guide them, only tiny oil lit lamps, which they carried but they didn't have a whole lot of light in them. For many of you, your journeys to the church this evening were through darkened streets. May your trip home be safe. Now, Canadians are no strangers to, to treacherous Christmas journeys. They can be pretty unpleasant memories, and we've no desire to make them into traditions but they are there, they happened. And they often, often are the one thing we remember about that particular Christmas. It appears that all of North America will remember the Christmas of 2022. We are having a once in a generation set of storms with weather watches and travel advisories from coast to coast to coast to coast. Still, we want to celebrate God even bigger than the weather. One tradition for me as a minister was silently wanting an angel to appear at the close of the Christmas Eve service to bless us all. Now that I'm retired, I can make that confession. Maybe other ministers have the same prayer, but it's not something we talk about. 
I wanted that extra level of drama to make the story so special that people would be truly moved and motivated by the love that God has for all. And then I moved to Scotland and discovered in CH4 a hymn collaboration between John Bell and Jorge Maldonado. And if David is still looking for favorite hymns, then mine is number 250. Sent by the Lord am I. These words in some form are commonly found throughout the Bible. Many of God's leaders eventually agree to one of God's crazy plans with a version of the words, send me. Even Mary began her journey with the same simple phrase, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. What struck me when I first heard the hymn and in some ways continues to haunt me today is the line the angels cannot change a world of hurt and pain into a world of love, of justice, and of peace. The task is ours to do, to set it really free. Oh, help me to obey. Help us to do your will. Now, of course, the angels are major players in God's plans, but they're only there as voice pieces on specific occasions. We are the ones who must bless our world with our presence and our actions of love, of justice, and of peace. The goodness of people has replaced my prayer for an extra-worldly angel. Well, on to the shepherds. Despite their surreal experience, they had some level of understanding of the angel's message and went to see for themselves what was happening in Bethlehem. One of those ancient Christmas traditions was becoming a reality for them. Finally, God's promised Savior had come. Now, we don't have a record of the shepherds bringing gifts, but we do know that what they said to Mary were treasures for her heart. When I was a new mother, I had similar treasures come my way from the wise women of Granton, Granton Village in Alberta, in Canada. I've mentioned before that Granton was part of my first ministerial charge. These women were the modern shepherds who came to see my new baby and blessed me with their kind words and helpful gifts. They knew what it meant to be God's hands through their actions of love, of justice, and of peace. And they're probably the reason I feel so connected to both Grant and congregations all these years later. When God's people do give good things for us, like Mary, they become treasures that remain in our hearts forever. Well, it's been a special afternoon for me here, but there is this technology thing, and where there's technology, there's an off switch. And so I must bid you good night before the Zoom master hits the mute button. We have been watching, and now the day is here. Now is the time to say Merry Christmas. And yes, Elsa, Elspeth, you can open a gift because it's Christmas in Scotland. We can go gently from our gathering, knowing that with the dawn will come a new day, a new light, a time for wondrous things to happen, a day to receive God's blessings. Amen. Thank you, Caroline. And as Caroline says, I think we're, we're nearly there. Um, just as a wee introduction, we, you may notice we have four candles lit on the right side. These are for the four Sundays in Advent. And in about 30 seconds, I'm going to light the white one. 
because that means that Christmas is here. And after that, I would like you all to invite you all to say Merry Christmas to the people around you. Merry Christmas, everyone. I'd like to now ask once Stanley stops going round <laughs> I will take this opportunity to wish the Zoom congregation all Merry Christmas so if you'd like to give them all a wave and we will sing our final carol tonight which is O Come All Ye Faithful and if I'd like to ask you at the end could you just remain standing for the blessing
May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all this Christmas day and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming this evening and have a lovely Christmas. Can we talk? Can we talk? Can we talk?